Ladies and gentlemen, it's FIGHT WEEK! Okay, nothing. Let's try that again. It's FIGHT WEEK! And we got the main event, double header interview. We got Jim Ellers followed by Luis Palomino. Both interviews, one video. Can't ask for much more than that. How have you been, man? Man, things have been good. I've um, definitely have been 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 blessed. You know, I know 2020 has been hard on a lot of people, um, especially um, being a business owner. Myself having a gym, you know, it's definitely a hard time for for gyms. I see gyms closing down left and right, and it's and it's just sad to to see. You know, I don't care if you're a gym that's across the street from me. You know, I don't want to see anybody lose their business and something that they've been working on for their whole life. But, um, you know, I've been good. Thank God that my gym has, I don't know, no, I don't know if we're in the clear yet of everything, but, you know, we're kind of getting back to where we used to be member wise. And that's good. And, you know, training has just been going great, man. You know, I'm, I've been on a tear and bare knuckle going 4 and 0. And, you know, next Friday, Friday the 13th. We're going to see my hand raised after I win that title. I, I tell you, man, I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm pumped. I, uh, I, I, it, it's, I, I, I love this fucking fight. Let, let's backtrack for a second. Let's, uh, let's go back in a little bit of time. Let's maybe let's educate some people. So originally you and Palomino are supposed to be at BKFC 11. That was, that was the original plan. And then, you know, like some people on your team got sick and stuff like that. I guess just maybe like refresh people. Talk about that just for a second. Yes, we were supposed to fight, you know, I guess on BKFC 11. Um, you know, I don't even know, honestly, before that, you know, we were supposed to have this whole bare knuckle tournament. You know, I've been right. asking for my title shot for, for a while right. now, you know. And so we were going to have this whole tournament. Hopefully, we were going to meet in the finals and – we were on the opposite sides of the bracket. So, you know, I was supposed to have another fight. He was supposed to have another fight. And then, you know, if we both won our fights, then maybe we would have saw each other um, in the finals. Uh, you know, I've been asking for this title fight for quite some time for now. You know, I pretty much cleared out the division. They're just bringing in people from here and there to try to give me some sort of challenge. And um, so we were supposed to fight, I guess, on BKFC 11 because they – um, kind of scrapped the whole idea of the the tournament, I guess, you know, due to COVID and right. whatever, whatever their right. reasoning may be. Right. Um, you know, so I had about four weeks notice for that fight. He was actually supposed to fight. Um, no, I think we were supposed to fight on BK. I don't know. We were supposed to fight on another BKFC, but he was supposed to fight before that. That whole BKFC got canceled. Um, so he was training ready for that fight. I, um, I got, I got a four weeks notice. My, my, my coach got COVID and, you know, as you've seen over and over again on other organizations that even if, even if a coach gets COVID sometimes they scrap the whole fight. Um, my, my coach was positive for three of those four weeks of that training camp that I, that I was supposed to have. So it's not like I can just go find a new boxing coach. You know, this guy has been with me from the beginning. We've come up with a game plan for bare knuckle. You know, it's not the same as just regular boxing or MMA. You know, this is something different. This is something that we've kind of come up with a, a formula for success. And I just feel that when I, when I, my hand is raised for that belt, that his hand will be raised as well, you know, because this is something that we've been working hard together. And um, so the whole, the whole fight kind of got scrapped. You know, I was like, I'm not going to do this. He ended up fighting um, Isaac Valley Flag, yep. um, who took the fight on one week's notice, you know, cut a lot of weight and, the fight definitely didn't end up going his way. You know, he didn't he didn't have a lot of time to prepare for that fight. So kind of kind of upset that, you know, for himself, for for Isaac also, that, you know, he didn't really get the opportunity that he deserves because he was three and zero also right. in, in bare knuckle. Um, I think if he would have got a full camp, that probably would have went different. But um, so whole bunch of drama, you know, with me saying that, you know, basically speaking my mind, saying that, hey man, like I feel like this guy just kind of cut the line. He kind of cut um, everyone else working hard and putting in that work. And 
it was kind of disrespectful to myself who was 4-0 and, and the whole roster really who has been fighting and, and putting in that work for, for their chance at the bare knuckle title. Yeah, I and like you said, you know, when they had the 155 pound tournament, you guys were on opposite ends of the bracket. It almost seemed, you know, I, a lot of people were talking about that was probably the fight that was going to happen. It was going to end up with you and him anyway, right? You and Palomino, and I, I think that's the fight that a lot of fans wanted to see. Uh, it, it's it's a fight that you know we kept talking about. It, it, it and it just seemed like destiny you know and, and i know that sounds cliche but it just kind of seemed like destiny that it was supposed <laughs> to happen you know then like you said he beats isaac valley flag then after the fight which i thought was a little odd but the champ called you out you know he wins the belt first thing he does uh his post-fight interview you know he calls you out uh you know to fight you i guess to because maybe you know he, he knew that you had been there the whole time and you know you were the guy that was you had kind of carried the hundred and 55 pound uh, weight class on your back. I, I think that's safe. And I think that's fair to say. And, you know, I think he knew that you were, you were the, you're the top dog, right? At 155, you know, he wins the belt. And I think to solidify that championship, I think he kind of has to beat you, right? If he's going to go on and be a successful champion, right? He, he's going to have to beat you. I, I I don't think there is no, and there's no, I don't think it's controversial or to say that I, he has to, he has to beat you. You're the guy, you're four. No, like I said, 155 pounds. You've gone in and done things that you you know you shock the world every time, and you just keep getting more and more impressive. And that's not blowing smoke up your ass. It's just that's the way it is. That's what's happened, you know, so far. And I I, I guess from that perspective, man, you know, you, you guys had the 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 Paige Van Zant press conference for uh, you know when she was there, and you guys butted heads, and you know all kinds of crazy stuff ensued after that. Like you said, drama. You know how it's is this fight personal to you at all, or is it is it business as usual? I, I guess maybe talk about that part specifically. Right. So, yeah, man. To to me, this is this is all business. Not I never take anything personal. I think um, it's more personal on his end. Um, like you said, he's the one that kind of called me out after that after his after his fight. I mean, what champion calls out? um a challenger after their fight you know when you're the champ you're 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 on top you should be riding that high and um he took man he took the majority of his interview to bring up my name over and over and over again and um i think it's i think it's more he that i i said and i said it and you know if you if you watch the table talk i got him to pretty much admit that that hey he needs to he needs to beat me to to make his to make his title legit and that's really what this is all about so i really don't understand why he's so upset if he believes the same thing that i believe so i mean i i'm kind of really confused on what he's so upset about but um if he wants to make it personal that's that's his thing but like i've told people in the past that after the fight's over uh you know i'll throw some water on his face to wake him up help him up off the canvas and I'll go grab him a beer, and hopefully things can go back to normal. Well, I, I, that was going to be my next question: How you see this fight going? But I guess you already <laughs> you already kind of explained it. I, I mean, is that because you know everybody knows? I've said this a thousand times. Everybody knows what you do. You go in, you go for the kill. You you want to take him out as as early as possible. Is that? I mean, it's the same thing with with Luis, or yeah, going? it's al it's almost like um, with Khabib. Everybody right. knows what Khabib's going to do, right? These guys right. should be training, wrestling, wrestling, wrestling every day because they know he's not going in there to stand with you. He's going in there to take you down and, and smash you. And, you know, it's, I think it's very hard to train for my style, um, you know, without just getting trauma to the head because I'm coming at you and I'm, I'm bringing that pace. And um, that's, that's the plan. It's just, it's going to be better than you've ever seen before because I've actually got a full camp. You know, my last four fights, I fought four fights in six months, taking fights on four weeks notice, three weeks notice. Um, I think the, the longest fight camp I probably had was my first fight where I had five, five weeks notice. Um, so you're going to see a different animal in there and my cardio is going to be insane. 
Well, I, 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 I don't know, man. I, I, I love this fucking fight. You know, with the, with the, your style and Luis's style, it's like uh, what, this is how I've explained it several times. It's almost like uh, two bulls in a china shop kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense, but that that's Not how I, that, that's how I see this fight. Is like you guys, you know, because he, he looks for the kill too. You look for the kill. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm. I don't even know. I don't even know what else to say about it. Like I'm, 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 I'm so fucking excited for this fight. I'm glad that it's actually happening. I'm glad you know you're getting the shot. I'm glad you know you guys are finally this, this. Like I said, it's destiny. I, I think it's this fight is just it's meant to be. It's meant to happen. It's going to solidify, you know, the 155 pound division. I, I think to be perfectly honest, you know, I, I think it's going to help solidify, you know, bare knuckle. Even further, I think this is going to be one of those fights when we look back, you know, because, you know, Luis has a name, you have a name. And I think with YouTube, what's going to happen, it's going to be just, oh, it's going to be explosion. And I, I I don't even know what else to say. Yeah. Like, I, I can't pump it up any more than that. Like, literally, I, I think it sells itself. I really do. Yeah. To me, that's, you know, that is the plan. You know, I tell people, you know, I'm not changing my, my style for anybody. Um, I, I go with that saying, you know, I live by the sword, die by the sword. And I'd rather get get knocked out doing what I do best than than making a boring fight, running around and and point fighting. You know, um, David Feldman pays us to get in there and and put on a show. And that's what I'm going to do from from bell to bell, round to round. Hundred percent, man. Well, like I said, buddy, I, I we appreciate you so much, man. I appreciate you for making some time. I know you got a busy schedule, you know, just being a week out. And uh, thank you so much. By the way, guys, BKFC 14 on Friday the 13th. Don't be superstitious. Friday the 13th. Uh, next week, go to the BKTV app. Download it. It's like three ninety nine or something. Just, just fucking. Super, super cheap to watch some great fights. Yeah, it's stupid, super cheap. You can go back and watch, you know, the whole catalog of fights these guys have already had, you know, on top of uh, BKFC 14 coming up. So that's all I got, man. Like I said, good luck to you, sir. And uh, we'll be watching. I'll be there. I can't wait. It'll be my first time in Miami. So I'm pumped for that, too. So I'm excited. And uh, that's all I got, man. All right, man. Thank you so much for having me. Take care, buddy. All right. Have a good one. You too, bud. How, how do you feel? You know, it's, it's a week out. Uh, one of the biggest bare knuckle cards, BKFC 14, next Friday. Uh, you know, you versus Jim Ellers for the 155 pound championship. You're the champ. Uh, you know, how are you feeling going into this, man? I feel amazing, man. I, I mean, it's like I told Dave, man, you got to keep me active. You know, um, the more activity, the better I feel. You know, camp one, I was good. Camp two, I was great. This camp. I'm ready to kill, man. You know, I just want to get in there and get it done. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Where were you? Uh, let, let's let's take a trip back because, like I said, this is your first time on the show. Let's take a trip back, man. So your transition into, like, the bare-knuckle world, you know, a lot of people know you from the MMA world. What was that trend transition like for you? What kind of things did you, you know, change up training-wise? I think it was just, you know, the transition was just a perfect fit for me, you know, just because – in the MMA world, I was always the one looking to, 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 to trade with people, you know, looking for that, for that knockout, that high net rail, you know, so it was, it was, you know, it was great. And as far as training for this, you know, it was like, <laughs> it's, it's easier, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just so much more easy, you know. Um, I don't want to say that bare knuckle is easy like that because it is bare knuckle, you know, anything, anything happens, you know, get cut up easily, hands can go bad, but for me, it was like, everything I can ask for in one organization, you know, I don't have to worry about people trying to like take me down and hold on to me and be like, you know, stop swinging at me, you know, <laughs> like, I don't have to worry about that stuff no more. I can actually, I don't have to be timid about swinging so I can actually let it go, you know? Yeah. So it was just, it was just perfect, man. And as far as training is the only things that we added to that was just some, some conditioning for the fist and more mobility and more footwork, more head movement, you know? You want to, you want to, you don't want to get hit. You want to hit. You don't want to get hit in this game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even, even a fighter that's not as good as you can finish you with a with a bad cut. The fight can be stopped. You know, so yeah, you can't be in there just risking. You know, to get hit for anything. So, 
you know, you you and Jim, it's almost – and I talked to Jim earlier today, and, uh, you know, we were talking about this where, you know, you got – there was the that 155-pound tournament, which kind of ended up – disappeared because of COVID and stuff. But, you know, you guys were in that tournament, and you guys were on opposite ends of the bracket. So it almost seemed like, you know, you two guys were the favorites, you know, to uh, eventually face off. It almost seemed like that's what – that's what was coming. It was yeah. going to be you and him. And, uh, you know, of course, the whole thing happened where, you know, one of his coaches got sick with COVID or whatever. Then he had the, you know, he he stepped out because of that. Uh, you know, you ended up facing Isaac Valley Flag. Short notice, you beat Isaac Valley Flag. M- maybe walk us through, walk us through that whole thing, you know, of getting that replacement short notice and having to switch opponents and then – you know, you making the call out to Jim Ellers after the fight. Yeah, well, you know, I was three camps in, man. I was three camps in, you know. I was getting ready for the second round of the tournament, which they offered me Jim, in which he said no. And then, you know, he you know, he did mention something about if if he was going to fight me, it had to be for the title. The COVID hits, titles, um, the titles offered to him and I. And, you know, I took it, he took it. And within, I think, like a couple of weeks, he was like, oh, you know, uh, can do this fight without my trainer because he got COVID, whatever. So now, you know, they give me uh, some other dude, and that falls off. The whole entire car falls off, so I'm back into camp two. And then uh, Ashley Valley Flash shows up to step up, man, and, you know, we, we picked up the title and made it quick, showed him quick, you know, showed him sweet. And uh, now, it's, you know, the thing is this, man, is. There's something that, that Jim's been saying that, that is very true. I'm not against the way you say it, you know. He, you know, uh, did I step up to take this opportunity for the title shot? Yes. Did I win? Yes. Am I the champion? Absolutely I am. I believe I'm a champion every single day I go to the gym and every single day I wake up in the, from, from my bed. You know, I've, I've always carried myself as a champion. I train to be a champion. You know, it's a reason why I hold four, four world titles, you know, in MMA. Yeah. You know, so the opportunity was given to me. You know, he was the one that chose not to be there. So whatever salt he's facing and he's feeling like, you know, what's the shit on me, you know, that's him. That's the way that he is, you know. And that's the colors that I saw come out of him after I was always supporting him as an old training partner. But, um, you know, it's, it's true, you know. He was the number one contender. He was the one that was expected to fight for the title first. He's the one that at the at the moment was four and over well, now and four and over three knockouts. Yeah. You know, like you know, he was the one that everybody was talking about, everybody knows, you know, in the bare knuckle world, right? And right. it's it's only a matter of truth that hey, I want you next because you deserve this shot. We were supposed to do this two times ago, you know, and I need to get you the fuck out the way so I can get a real big money fight. You know, like that that's what I'm aiming at. You know, I, I've told Dave and I told every interview that I say over and over again. Now, I share this dream with Dave of making the sport, you know, the biggest and most watched combat sport in the world. I want to be a part of it. I don't, I don't want to just go down the history as the first 155-pound uh, champion. You know, we already got that. You know, I want to go down the history as the first and the undefeated retired BKFC champion that fought the biggest challenges that there was to be at that time. That's what I'm aiming at. That's my goal. You know, so I want, you know, I want this fight with Jim to happen. You know, I want to tear him up and not, you know, in a, in a negative manner, just in a professional form. I want to take him out of the way because I am the better fighter. I am the stronger fighter. I am the most powerful fighter. I am the faster fighter. And I'm just better all around. I'm going to take him out. It's just as simple as that. That's, that's not cockiness. That's confidence. That's because I know who I am. I've trained with him before. And I'm not judging from his past. I've improved since then. The old me moved his ass. You know, if I've improved from that. So I'm speaking with facts over here, you know. I'm going to prove it on Friday the 13th. And what I want after that is I want the biggest name possible that's going to make this, you know, show go bigger and bigger and more wide and, you know, worldwide. That's what I want. I, 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 want, to, I want to touch back on something uh, It seemed kind of interesting was, you know, you talked about that you, you, you kind of feel like you have to – you feel like you have to beat Jim in order to kind of move to the next, I guess, whatever stage of bare knuckle, whatever your journey Definitely. is. Definitely, man. Look, uh, yeah. Jim did a hell of a job knocking people out, you know, yeah. hell of a high night reels, 
that, that help improve the viewing of, of Berno. We have to respect something like that, you know? Sure. He, he found somebody in himself that he didn't know was there when he was in the UFC and when he was fighting at MMA. And, you know, he's developed, you know, another part of himself as a striker, which I've been since day one. So it's a hell of a challenge for me. I don't, I don't look at him as an easy opponent. You know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I am better, you know, and I will prove that, you know, with work. And I'm not just saying that with words, you know, I will show that with my hands. But do I have to get him out of the way, you know, in that matter? Yes, I have to, because he's the one that has been, you know, heard all this time. You know, we only have two fights. You know, he has four fights, you know, and, and there's been a lot of promotion behind him and because of his knockouts. And he's well deserving of a title shot. You know, once again, it's not like Dave said, hey, Jim, hold up. You know, I like Baboon better. Um, I'm going to give him the title shot, not you. That's not what happened here. You know, right. he was offered a title shot just how he asked for it. And he said yeah. no twice. You know, I believe that he's ducking me in a sense. I believe that he's not afraid of me. I don't believe that he's a, a scared dude. I don't, you know, he wouldn't be doing the damage he's doing, you know, coming into the square circles, you know, you know, showing fear. I don't, I don't believe right. that. I just right. believe that he's insecure of his abilities to beat me. And that's what mm -hmm. I believe. I believe that he's not completely secure of himself, that he can actually beat me, you know? And I think that's in the back of his head. And he's trying to buy himself time to train. And, you know, the, the type of mistakes that he makes in the square circle, you know, there's a lot of mistakes that you can face in under one year. No matter what he does, I'm always a step ahead, man. I'm, I'm constantly improving myself, you know? I, I don't even want to be a trainer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love being a student. I love learning, you know? Yeah. Like, I record everything I do and I go home and I watch it and I study myself. I don't even look at the people that I go with. I look at myself and I study and I study and I study and I want to make myself better. Because I know I'm, my, tech, my clock is ticking, man. I mean, maybe two, three more years, maybe, because I feel good. My body is good. I eat well. I treat my body well. Yeah. In 14 years of fighting, I was the one doing all the damage. You know, maybe like, what, 20% out of 100% I got damaged in 14 years. So I feel great, you know. So, you know, I want, I want to get the best out of me in this next year's. I, and I guess let's talk about this too. So you, you guys had the, uh, you know, the face off at that, that press conference where Paige Van Zandt was and stuff and the head butt and all that. I, uh, what do you, what are you thinking with him, man? Because, you know, I asked him, I said, Hey man, is this, it, it almost seems personal between you two. I, I don't know if it's show. I don't, you know, cause I know sometimes guys hype up a fight and I, I understand the game, you know, I get that. But like, he says, no, it's not personal. He said, but I think Palomino is, nah, I think it's a little no, personal for him. No, 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 no. It's not personal, man. Look, I'm going to tell, tell you the truth, man. I guess we have different upbringings, okay? You know, I, I've said it, you know, over and over again, and, and not because I only said it and it came out of me. It comes out of many people around me, people that follow me, even people that I don't know. Look, in Miami, in the 305, you know, I'm the true underground king in the 155-pound division. You know, um, people talk about the street Jesus, right? George Masvidal. I beat that guy. I baptized Masvidal. Right? I had some serious wars with Gigi. You know, I underestimated him in the first fight. You know, second fight was, it was there. You know, he, he clipped me. He got me. You know, and it's only happened once in my whole entire career because I've never been, even in that fight, I was, I've never been knocked out where I don't, I don't know what's going on. Like, the lights are off. You know, it was a... Uh, Equilibrium issue, a drop out, and they, they stopped it right away. I'm in his hometown, whatever. You know, yeah. but my thing is this, man. You know, I am. I it is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. I, I I put in the work, you know, and and I represent myself the way that I am. You know, as a champion. Um, is there something personal? No, man. It, it, look, look at the video when I come, right? <laughs> it was about Page Razan and Devil out signing to the to the organization, you know, and I was. You know, I was invited to this to this press. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be sitting at the table too, and I'm just sitting out here watching like a spectator. And I'm okay, right. all right. So I guess I'm just going to wait until this is over. And once it's over, everything was nice and calm. And you know, yeah, you want to add, you know, a little bit of sales to your fight, of course. So, so I just stepped to the mic and I'm right. Like, but I'm I'm laughing. I'm, I'm literally laughing because to me it's it's funny. You know, I'm like I'm like what's up with this dude with a fake ass belt over there? You know, like <laughs> this guy's walking around with a toy store stuff. You know, how you, you know, I'm not going to get mad at that. I'm not going to take that personal. I'm not, he's not hurting my feelings, you know, but if right. anything is hilarious to me, it's funny. But when you go and, and you say things like, you know, hey, 
we can do it right now. The likes are on a pay-per-view. These are his words, I'm quoting, right? We can do it right now. The likes are on a pay-per-view, you know? Meet me in the middle and then rub your face in my face. You know, like, I grew up in the streets, man, and I, that's not that's not bullshit. I, like, I, I, I came to Miami 28 years ago from California in a time where gang violence was all over flooded, man. You know? and, and, you know, people get in your face that you said reaction, and I look, I'm very con I'm not in the street no more, of course. I'm a professional. I'm very right. conscious of what I'm doing. Normally, I'll break your nose and make sure that nobody else, you know, is going to hit me from the back or even if somebody right. hits me, I'm ready for the next person, right? right? I know I'm not in that situation, even though one of his goons decided to jump in here that he was more mad about him trying to swing at me. Right? Yeah. Bro, like, bro, like, this is a one on one thing. There's nobody's jumping gym. There's nobody like attacking Jim in a group setting here. You have nothing to do with this. I don't know who the hell that cat was, but I love to see him try that shit in my face one more time, man. Or come to my gym and follow me if you can, if you really think you can do something like that. You know, because the crowd is there, he jumped in trying to kick me and shit. Whatever, man. So, you know, Jim, I went, if there was cameras aiming at my feet, like I literally like got on my tippy toes to make sure I don't hit his nose. And I hit him like with 10, 15 percent, man, in the forehead, like a tablet like eight. I told him, get out of my face. And he kept rubbing, like almost kissing. I'm not trying to kiss you, man. You know, so I gave him a little, what I call a little nub tap, you know, back up on my face, man. You know, this, yeah. this, this is real. You know, <laughs> you know, you can't tell me, meet me in the middle. You know, we can do this right now. You know, rub your, your face in my face and I expect nothing to happen, bro. You know, so it was a warning shot. It was in. It, it was calculated. It wasn't out of control. It wasn't out of emotion. You know, he's not living in my head rent free that he says. If anything, I think he says that because I'm in his head, man. And I've been waiting for this fight two calls ago. You know, yeah. where has he been in those calls? He said no, then he said no again. Whatever excuse. I respected the second excuse. The second one I respected because, you know, I understand. I read what he said because it was, it was right after he spoke to me. <laughs> he, he told me. Right, he told me, hey, you know, I just wanted you to hear this from me. You know, you know, COVID, I had a COVID outbreak, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I thought, okay, well, you, do you have COVID? You know, if you, if you don't, are you still gonna fight? Then I looked, man, I spoke to my family and friends and my coach, and we're, I'm gonna sit this out. And his excuse was, you know, the first thing in my head was like, man, the coach is not gonna fight the fight for you, you know? But his excuse was, and his reason was that you know, he believes that his coach made him and put him where he is right now, which I totally respect. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want to win, you know, because he really believes he's going to win. And he's, he's, you know, you have to believe that, right? Um, and he doesn't want to win without sharing that win, that victory with his coach. So in some level, I can understand that because I have, you know, a big love and affection for my trainers as well. Mm. Well, we just built different, man. If, if my trainer had conceived COVID, if both my trainers had conceived, if all three of my trainers, I have a conditioning trainer, I have a creator, I have uh, my boxing coach for the last five years in, in kickboxing, Eric and Theater Castaños, and I have Dino Spencer, my other boxing coach that I started right before signing BKFC, when we were talking about signing on BKFC. So like, if all three of them got COVID for some reason, God willing not, right? Um, yeah. I would do like some Skype shit and I'll show up to the damn fight with my girlfriend in the corner, man. You know, we're just bred different. You know, I'm not going to turn away from a title fight that I earned myself, that I've been asking for, yeah. and then just be like, oh, you know, I can't fight now because, I mean, hey, I respected his choice. I respected his decision, decision until he started like, rapping on this shit, man. You know, it is what it is, man. It, you know, a lot of people on paper, and I was just talking to uh, uh, Dave Feldman, and uh you know, we were talking about how, on paper, you know, I, I get that Paulie and Artem was was a huge fight, you know, for the company. But on paper, I think fight for fight, this possibly is the most stacked card. You know, I, I I've seen all of them, right? So like, I, this is this is possibly the most stacked card I think that the company has put on. You know, and and. The pressure, you know, as it goes up, is is there any pressure on you, you know, to make sure that, you know, you go out there and perform? Because I, you know, as much as you want to win, like you said, at the same time, you also want to, you know, you you want to further the sport, you know, as as much as you yourself want to win. But like, 
how how does that pressure you know, does it affect you at all? Is it just another day in the office? No, not at all. Not at all. I tell you why, man. I tell you why. You know, I, I see a lot of fighters ask this type of questions, and I and I see their answers that don't really add up. I will tell you the truth, man. Pressure, not at all, man. I'm happy. I'm excited that I get to fight in my hometown. You know, I was traveling for for four years before I started BKC. You know, and, and fighting all over the place, right? And I'm excited to fight here in front of my fans, my people, my family, you know, and, and to me, like, you know, I was a very big name in Florida. You know, I started fighting here. I collected, yeah. you know, three of those world titles that I collected were here in, in, in the biggest organizations here out of Florida, you know? And, and when I fought here, you know, like I never fought locals. Like they always had to fly somebody in. Nobody wanted to fight me, man. And that's just the truth, right? And, to me, to fight in front of my people and hear my name, and, and that's an energy. I'm, I'm all about energy, and I feel that to the core, and it fuels me to perform. So it doesn't pressure me; it fuels me. You know, if, if that makes any sense, you know, like that. Yeah, that's the way that I feel. You know, hundred like percent. Feel any pressure? You know, I, if any, if any of you excited, I'm anxious to get in there already and perform. You know, there's no. I don't, I don't have a thought or, or a belief or an angel belief in, in me losing this fight. And that's just the honest truth, man. Is he a dangerous fighter? Yes. Does he have some power? Yes. Is he durable? Can he take some hits? Yes. But he doesn't have what it takes to take me out, man. He doesn't have it. You know, now, once again, man, you know, God willing, you know, I mean, of course, you never know, man. This sport, it is what it is, you know? But I'm not going to look at those things. Okay, yeah, things can happen. Hey, I can tell him open if I can be open. Done because the cut the cut was too big. He can cut me open and vice versa, right? Right. You know, uh, I can click him putting the sleeve. He can click me putting the sleeve. Who knows, right? But I believe my ability, I believe in my technique and my head movement, my footwork. I believe I have more tools and you know in the box than him. And I just don't see him winning this fight in any way, shape, or form. Well, I, that kind of leads into my next, my last, final question. Last but not least, how does it go? Well, it goes. Just as it goes every time for Jim, right? He's gonna come gunning because he only has that right hand and that overhand that he looks for. He comes gunning forward, looking for that clinch to land that overhand, that uppercut, and that's all he's got. So if he knows that his only shot is to come forward gunning, mm. and I'm gonna stop him right in his tracks. I'm gonna stop him right in his tracks. I also hit hard. I am a lot faster than him. You know, and I have a lot more tools in the box, man. You know, I'm going to stop him in his tracks. He's going to run into a brick. He's going to put himself to sleep. And I believe if he makes it past the first round, then it'll be in the second round. All right. I, 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 I can't pick. I, I, man, I've been trying to pick this, <laughs> Luis, and, like, dude, I, all I know is I, I, I think the one thing that everybody can agree on there's no way you guys go past the third round. The, the, nah, I, there's, there's no way. Fight. Not this fight, man. There's no way. There's going to be a bang. The fans going to love it, man. Yeah. Well, my friend, I appreciate your time so much. It was a pleasure chatting with yeah. you for a little bit. Um, I, I can't wait. I'll be there, too. I'll be in Miami for the card. I'm, I'm so fucking excited, man. I mean, I really am. I'm fucking pumped for this card. Cool. And uh, down your show, bro. Absolutely, man. Appreciate the time, and uh, good luck to you. Oh, before and, I go, man, I have to thank people because they, you know, they yep. the ones that allow us. Man, sponsors are very important, man, you know, because they, they allow us to be able to, you know, focus 100% in, in what we do. And it's very hard, you know, when you have family and all that. So, you know, to not take too much of your time, FYI, Yas Florida, Yas International, my man, uh, Ralph Navarro, Fusion CBD, Divino Ceviche, 1-800-Injured, Carpet Fiber Music, Gorilla Barbers, Sativa, Bonel Marine, and my healing spot, uh, Jaguar Therapeutics, my training spots, the workout spot, Anna Pareda, the entire foundation, and Diego Castaños, and Dino Spencer from the world's famous history gym. Thank you guys for having me. 100%. Hey, before you go, I see that, I see the belt, I see the strap in the corner, man. Oh, yeah. Can, can we get a close, can we get a close up of that? Yeah, of course, of course, man. I'll bring it down for you. Yeah. I'm the collection over here. Here we go. We're looking to collect the new one. There it is. Oh, yeah. There it is. 
on the line this Friday. Guys, check it out. November 14th. I'm sorry, November 13th, November BKFC 13th. 14. Go to uh, download the BKTV app. Guys, it's it's three ninety nine, man. It's three ninety nine. That's a cup of coffee. Go spend okay. the three ninety nine. Get the get the app. Download it. Watch the card. It's I tell you what. If you guys have never seen Bare Knuckle before, tune into this. You will be hooked. This is the one to watch. <laughs> this is this is this is really the one. I mean, for real, yeah. this is the one to watch, man. One hundred and ten percent. You're going to be hooked. Once again, like I said, thank you for your time, sir. And uh, we'll see you in Miami, my friend. Thank you, brother. All right, brother.